Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 series PLC. That's a P2000 hardware features. Now the Productivity 2000 series of programmable logic controllers has a slim DIN rail density form factor. This means that the micro modular PLC can have a power supply, CPU, and seven IO modules in only 10 and a half inches. Inputs and outputs can be installed, removed, or replaced without turning power off to the PLC system. This is called hot swappable. This means that your system can remain running while troubleshooting your system hardware. Now the Productivity 2000 supports up to 240 local I.O. for discrete analog and motion applications with a high performance CPU equipped with five communication ports and 29 discrete and analog I.O. modules. Several remote I.O. options are available on this award-winning PLC in the Productivity Series family. And that Productivity Series family includes the Productivity 1000, which is a stackable micro PLC, the Productivity 2000, which is the micro modular programmable controller, and then we have a Productivity 3000, which is the modular programmable controller. Now these three series by Fax Engineering currently make up the Productivity Series PLC from Automation Direct. We will be looking at these features of this powerful P2000 controller so let's start by looking at the hardware. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. So if we actually look at the actual uh, productivity, you can see that we have base units, we have CPU and expansion units, we have power supplies, then we have our I.O. cards. And then we have motion control on top of that with spare parts and accessories. And we can actually uh, configure a system of the productivity by using this uh, online system configuration. Here we can see is that we've just added our power supply here and you can choose several different models. We've chosen the 100 to 240 volt supply. You also can choose then the CPU. Then we have our input module here, our output module, or sorry, our output module and our input module. And then we have a, a simulator input module here. So again, we can just build this up as we wish. You can see the CPU. We could put in um, a remote slave if we wish. So that is our system configuration. So let's take a look at our actual hardware that we have here. And what you'll see is that we have, we're gonna unbox our CPU first. And the CPU is a P2 550 CPU. But it has 50 megabytes of user memory. This means that you have plenty of room for your program and information. A real time clock or RTC is incorporated within the CPU. Now it has a four by 10 character OLED display and can display system status, or you can program this to display your own messages. This is ideal for troubleshooting a program. We also have a built-in micro SD card slot that can be used for program transfer and data logging. Now the P2000 CPU offers five different communication ports, RS-485, RS-235, RS-232, Ethernet, RJ45 for Ethernet IP scanner and adapters and Modbus TCP programming and monitoring protocols. And that's at 10, um, 100 megabits per second. Then we have remote RJ45 port for, and then we can use that for remote programming. Here's my connector clip for the RS-485 and it just plugs right into that CPU unit there. And then we have that micro B USB uh, port for programming and monitoring protocols. And you see the battery there that will maintain our program or and it will maintain our memory. Now next we'll take a look at the base unit. Now this base unit is a seven slot but it's also available in a 4, 11, and 15 I.O. module. Now, any I.O. module can be installed in any I.O. slot. There are no power supply budgets or module type restrictions on the placement. The base holds the power supply, CPU, and I.O. module or I.O. cards. The base can be DIN rail mounted or flush mounted in your control panel. And all discrete and analog modules can be software and uh, enabled for hot swap operation. That is to say that we can um, remove the cards at will. So here's my base unit. You see where my 
My power supply is clearly marked. And we'll just put the CPU unit onto the base unit. There is a clip on the top and there's a hook on the bottom. Two clips on the bottom, actually. It slides into the base unit and you pull up on the clip to lock it in place. There we go. Now that unit is securely uh, in the base unit itself. Next, what we'll do is take a look at our power supply. It is right there. And our power supply, it snaps the leftmost socket of our Proactivity 2000 base. Now the power supply comes in your choice of three different external supply voltages, 100 to 240 volt AC, which we've seen earlier, um, 12 to 24 volt DC or 24 volt AC, or 24 to 48 volt DC. And there are connectors underneath a hinged access cover. And this has enough power so you can place any combination of IO cards without need to worry about location or power budget. Next, what we'll do is take a look at our output card. Let's prompt that up there. And as you see, I just show you the back of the unit and you can see where my clips are for my DIN rail mounting, as well as there's the connectors if I want to hardwire that to the back plane of my control panel. So inputs and outputs are IO cards. We have several different varieties. So we have DC IO, and there's a variety of 8 point, 15 point, and 16 point, and 32 point syncing or sourcing discrete IO points from that are available. Isolated commons and IO status indicators provided on each module. Choose from three wiring options. We have a screw, we have a spring terminal, and we have zip link pre-wired cables and connection modules. And then we have a pullout tab on the edge each module that will give you the latest information if you scan it with your phone. So here we have a hook on the back and we have a clip on the top. So you hook the back onto the unit, put it in and you pull up on that clip and it will lock it securely in place onto your back plane. So this particular one I have here is, is actually a, a relay output. It's an eight point and it's a P2-08 TRS. Next, what we'll do is put in a, um, a DC input. It's a discrete input module. It's a P2-16 ND3-1. And there we go. And inputs, we can also have AC inputs. We have eight and 16 point AC inputs and output modules and eight and 16 point relay output modules. And we can choose from, again, three different wiring options, your screw, spring, or zip link, pre-wired cables and connected modules. Now we also have analog modules that we can actually put on this. And analog modules incorporate displays that make wiring, programming, and troubleshooting easier. There's a four, eight, and 16 channel IO module. The eight channel combination analog IO module, there's a nine, eight channel thermocouple, there's a 10, six channel RTD and an eight channel therm thermistor. Choose, and again, we can choose from these three different wiring programs. We also have communication ports that we can put on um, to the unit. And the communication module allow connection of wide range of serial devices. So if we need more than what we have currently on our CPU unit, we can then put in uh, additional serial ports. So this is a really uh, communication um, type device that we have here for our controller. And what we're doing is just putting in our um, simulator input module, which is the P2-08 SIM. Take off the sticker on the front there. And 
what you see is again, we have our tab that can pull out. We can scan that to get the latest information on our module that we're uh, installing. And we'll hook that in the, the back plane. And then again, once it's in, pull up on the connector to lock it in place. So there is my assembly of my uh, Proactivity 2000. And you can see there's a ruler here. And again, about 10 and a half inches gives me my entire length of my display or my unit itself. So we did talk a little bit about the remote IO and there are actually two modules. We have a P2RS and the P2RS has one RJ45 Ethernet remote I.O. port. We have an RS-232, which is an RJ-12 port with Modbus RTU um, and ASCII I.O. protocols. And we have an RS-45 three-wire terminal on our Modbus RTU master slave and ASCII out input and output. And we have a micro USB so we can do remote uh, location and remote programming from that location. We also have four line by 10 character um, LED display. And we can have up to eight remote slaves that connect to a single CPU for remote I.O. Uh, network. So that is our P2RS. And we can just put that right in where the CPU was, which we saw earlier. The other way we can expand or do remote is using the Productivity 1000 remote. So we can use the cards from the 1000, which adds a low cost Productivity I.O. to your P2000 uh, CPU. And that provides one Ethernet RJ45 port for use with the, um, the unit to actually program it. And then we can add up to eight P1-RX remote bases and we connect to a single P2000 unit. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.